Hello, welcome to another episode of Whiskey Row. My name is David, and tonight we are going to be doing a video I'm very excited about. I am sipping on some 1792 Full Proof, which I recently picked up on a trip uh, out of state, and uh, man, it's good. 1792 Full Proof, very good. So this is the second time I shot the video. I shot it once, and the audio was bunk. I couldn't use the video at all. So this is the second time around. Uh, so I won't be pulling things out of the bags um, because I've already put them on the shelf uh, behind the camera. But tonight I'm going to walk through. Basically, uh, recently took a trip. Uh, went from Virginia down to North Carolina, South Carolina, and then Georgia. And obviously came back home. Um, and when I was in those other states, I uh, may or may not have purchased some things that I'm going to show you today. It was a good trip. I mean, obviously it was down there to see family and some other things, but I'm very excited to show you what I got today. I'm going to start off and just kind of go through, they're kind of in the order of, of which I picked them up, uh, starting from North Carolina to South Carolina, Georgia, that I may or may not have picked them up. So, uh, yeah, so let me let me walk you through what we got. Uh, 94 proof Elijah Craig straight rye. Uh, obviously have uh, some Elijah Craig's. I've got the Elijah Craig small batch and the Elijah Craig, or the Elijah Craig barrel proof and the Elijah Craig small batch. And uh, I'm pretty excited about those. Uh, the, the barrel proof I have not opened yet, but I'm excited to try that at some point. Um, I also uh, just posted a video about picking up the Elijah Craig 18 year. Uh, very excited about that. And then, um, so I picked up the rye while I was out there. Next, uh, Bell Mead 108 proof reserve. It's Bell Mead reserve. It's 108.3 proof. Uh, this is not something that I see in Virginia. So I uh, picked it up. There were some other uh, Bell Meads that I saw that I've seen a little bit, the Madeira, and there was one other one, but uh, the XO I think is what it's called. Uh, anyway, I did pick those up, um, but I did pick up the 108 proof. Um, I do have the uh, Sour Mash Bourbon, um, uh, Sour Mash Whiskey Straight Bourbon, uh, so this will be a, a good complement to that, uh, hopefully. Also in North Carolina, I picked up a store pick. It's a Woodenville Straight Bourbon uh, Private Select, coming in at 120.7 proof. Uh, the barrel uh, that this came from was described as um, uh, creme brulee with spice. So it sounded good to me. Um, that's a flavor profile that I'm, I'm interested in trying. I do like some sweet and spicy uh, in my bourbon. So picked up a Willet bourbon. I didn't see a Willet rye, but I did see the Willet bourbon. Thought I'd give that one a shot. Um, maybe 40-ish dollars. All of these I paid retail. There were some I saw that were marked up, but I passed on them because they were just priced out. There was a, a blood pack for $399 at MSRPs here in Virginia for $130. It was just too much. It was out of my league, so skip that. But got the Willet. This uh, was a South Carolina. They got so as I've un, uh, unbagged things from the last video, which I had to delete. Uh, I, I put them on the shelf. Some got out of order, so that wasn't all my North Carolinas yet. But here's a South Carolina, um, potentially a South Carolina, 109 proof um, makers private select store pick. Excited about that. Uh, as you can tell by my makers back here, I've got a number of store picks. Uh, some of these are different flavor profiles that are Virginia store, Virginia ABC picks, uh, but this is actually a South Carolina store pick, so that's pretty cool. A barrel bourbon cast strength uh, coming in at 113.4. It's a five-year, six-month age statement on this bad boy. Um, I'm excited for that. I've got the dovetail up here, and I like it pretty well, so something else. Uh, this was a North Carolina store pick. Um, nothing special, but it is a you know a special barrel pick. So thought it would be a, it's the only uh, Woodford store pick that I have. So give it a shot. Got a Four Roses small batch select. Uh, I was very excited to see this. This was at the first store I stopped at. Um, I love Four Roses. Um, I've got the small batch. I've got the single. What is that? Single barrel? Yeah, small batch, single barrel. And uh, in Virginia, we don't have the small batch select yet. So this was a. This was a good a good find for me. I was very excited about that. And then uh, I asked that same manager in North Carolina. I said, "Oh, are there any other any, you know bourbons that uh, that are special or unique or interesting that I may not see in Virginia?" <laughs> and he pulls out a JTS Brown bottle and bond, which is uh, which is pretty funny. Uh, he told me a story about it, and I can't remember. I guess this was used in a movie. 
um, an older movie that I don't remember. Uh, anyway, it's a uh, bottle and bond. It's supposed to be pretty good, so uh, it was cheap. It was like fifteen, sixteen dollars or something. So uh, excited to try that. Then we get more into the Georgia stuff. Okay, so let's do these two next. Um, now there is whoa. I just dropped my camera remote. There's one bourbon um, that I'm going to show you at the very end of the video, which I was more excited about that than any of these others, uh, any of these other whiskeys that I bought through the entire trip. Uh, very much was uh, one of those things where after I bought it, I went back into the car and my wife was in the car and I, and I, and I teared up a little bit and I said, I found the, I found the, I found it. I found the whiskey that I, that I've been dreaming of. So uh, we'll share that in a little bit. Um, I found a bunch of bookers um, along the way. This was a 2019-01. Um, I saw a 2019-02 and a 2020-01. I've got a bunch of 2020-02s, but no 01s. I wanted to instead get more of different years. So this is a 2019-01, uh, and then I also got a 2008-02. So now I have a 2018, a 2019, and a 2020, or I've got three 2020s um, right now. So excited to kind of maybe do a side-by-side -side of all three years to see the differences, what uh, if I have any preferences or not. Uh, picked up a Bib and Tucker at a store in South Carolina. Uh, Six-year small batch. Never had a Bib and Tucker, but man, this sweet old lady was just selling the hell out of this. <laughs> and she was probably, what, I don't know, 50, 60, yeah, 55, 60, 65, so I don't know. Anyway, she was so excited. She got you know, tried the Bib and Tucker, so good. Anyway, so I picked it up. One of the things that was really interesting uh, was just being able to, you know, talking with the, North, the manager in North Carolina, the manager, one of the managers of South Carolina, some of the people, the workers in Georgia, is just seeing the variety that they get that I can't get, you know, and they'll, they'll get super excited about something, and I'm like, oh, I get that all the time, I, that's nothing, I can see that all the time. So it's kind of interesting to see the differences between, with the distributions from the different distilleries. Uh, the different brands, the different products, and how they go from state to state. So crossing state boundaries is obviously something that, that works to find stuff that you may not be able to get close to you. This is a Michter small batch unblended American whiskey. Um, I've already gotten the Michter's Rye. Whoops, it's over here. Michter's Rye and the Michter's US1. And so I uh, picked up this unblended one, uh, which would be my third Michter's, which I'm kind of excited about. And then I also picked up a small batch sour mash um, again so it's another another mictors uh, I've liked all the mictors that I have had in the past so I'm pretty excited about that uh, those were both like 40 ish um, picked up an old forester statesman it's something I can't get here in Virginia I've never seen here and yet uh, I saw it in North Carolina and Georgia and South Carolina so it was all over the place but Virginia so uh, again, I've got a lot of Old Forester product, and so being able to add another one to the uh, Old Forester line was, was pretty cool. <laughs> Early times, bottled and bond, but uh, not something I've ever had. So I do have a regular old, uh, over regular early times, but to try the bottled and bond was uh, something I wanted to do. So pick that up. Got a Redwood Empire Emerald Giant Rye Whiskey. I uh, actually ended up seeing two other variants of Redwood Empire, and I was kind of out of well over my budget, as you can imagine. Uh, so I didn't pick those up, but this was the first one that I saw and I picked it up. I've heard some good things uh, from some other folks about Redwood Empire, so I'm excited to try that. Uh, hopefully, of the three Redwood Empires that I saw, that I picked the right one. 1792 Foolproof. I didn't have that. I have a single barrel, and then I have a small batch. So I picked up the Foolproof. Uh, a good, you know, a good uh, other version of 1792. And then I picked up 1792. So now I've got all four of the normal, somewhat available 1792s. Um, now on that full proof, I actually bought two full proofs. And uh, <laughs> as you can tell, this other full proof is gone fast. Um, it's really, really good. Uh, I actually, when we were in Georgia, um, my wife's uh, daughter and husband uh, and I got into the foolproof bottle and we went through about, I'd probably say half to two thirds in one night. Um, it was good. It's really just, I mean, I'm drinking it now and, and it, this bottle is going to be gone very quickly. It's not something that's readily available for me in Virginia. So 
Uh, I hate to drink it so fast, but at the same time, it's 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 really good. Georgia had a ton of Weller Special Reserve. Uh, every store I went into, not every store, uh, probably just over half of the stores had some. They weren't on the floor. I had to ask the clerk for them. But they did have the Special Reserve. They didn't have the 107, the Antique 107s. They didn't have um, full proofs or anything else, but they did have the Special Reserve. It's the first Weller that I've ever owned, so I'm kind of excited about that. Then more on the expensive side, a Woodford Reserve Distiller Select Chocolate Malted Rye. Um, so this is, or not Distiller Select, this is the Master's Collection. So this is the, um, Woodford Reserve does some experimental type uh, stuff with some of their bourbons. And this is one of their experimental bourbons. I paid $1.29 for it. I don't know what retail is, so it might have been marked up a teeny bit, but doesn't seem that much and again I've, I've kind of heard mixed reviews about this particular one but it's not something I can get in Virginia at all so thought I'd try it give it a shot and then let me grab the one I, oh nope not yet so um, so the night after uh, my stepson-in-law and, and, and daughter-in-law and I got into the 1792 foolproof um, we started to uh, talk to my son and stepson-in-law about um, uh, you know what he liked about the bourbon because he they hadn't really uh, had much whiskey or bourbon neat if they always do Jack and Coke and kind of mix it mix it up and so we you know I got him into sipping it neat uh, or on ice we tried a little bit of both and he liked it and then we went out to a, uh, a Mexican restaurant and there um, for one of my drinks I got uh, Johnny Walker black on the rocks and I let them try it, and he was like, wow, that scotch is pretty good. You know, he's never done scotch before. The second day we were with him, he and I just kind of went store to store, and I was doing some hunting, and, and I was like, what, you know, what, what are you interested in? Like, does anything in this store look good to you? And he's like, I wouldn't mind trying some of that scotch that we had the other night. And I was like, well, let me pick up some scotches and see what kind of scotch, because, you know, there's different varieties of scotch. Anyway, there's different, you know, there's different regions that scotch comes from in Scotland, so... Um, we were talking and uh, I said, you know, well, let's let's pick up some different varieties and see what kind of scotch you like. So um, I picked up a, a blended scotch, a monkey shoulder. Uh, if you're new to the scotch world, this is a really pretty good starter. It's, you know, as you get more and more into scotch, you'll like it less and less. But if you're a bourbon guy getting into scotch, this is actually a really good place to start. Um, and, and this is my fourth or fifth bottle of Monkey Shoulder. So it's definitely something that I go back to, I like to have on hand, especially for people who aren't used to drinking scotch uh, neat. Uh, it's just kind of a very mild flavor across the board. So I picked up a bottle of that uh, for him to try. Uh, and then I picked up a, uh, off a recommendation from one of my old bosses, he recommended Famous Grouse Smoky Black. So I picked that up to throw into the mix of the, the uh, blind tasting that uh, my stepson-in-law and I did. My, my son-in-law, whatever. It's, anyway, uh, so we, we did a blind tasting between the Monkey Shoulder, the Famous Grouse Black, uh, the 1792 Full Proof, because I wanted him to have a baseline from bourbon to scotch so he could see the difference, and our Beg 10. And as you can see from those four... the monkey shoulder I've got the famous grouse black I've got the 1792 full proof but I'm missing the Ardbeg and that's because that was his favorite um, he loved the heavy smoky peaty Ardbeg so I left it with him uh, Jordan hope you enjoy it uh, and I'm, I'm glad you're uh, you went you found a scotch that you really like uh, there was some humor he's a firefighter EMT and so the fact that he loved the smokiest of the of the of the options was was kind of funny. A Habiki Harmony Japanese whiskey, um, and I wanted to add that to my other one, which is a um, Yamazaki. And uh, so between the Yamazaki and the uh, Habiki Harmony, uh, I'm going to pick up. Uh, there's a third Scotch, which is one of the first Japanese. It's actually not one of the. It is the first Japanese whiskey I ever had. It was probably a year and a half ago. No, it was longer than that almost two years ago now um, I was in downtown DC and went into this place and they were letting me sample some stuff can't remember the name of it but I'm gonna pick up a bottle of that and then I'm gonna do a taste between that one which I loved it was the first whiskey that I sipped neat that I enjoyed a lot um, as I was first getting into it anyway but I'm gonna do a blind between 
the Habiki Harmony, the Yamazaki, and that other one, which I can't remember the name of, which I've seen in some stores around here, so, but it's like, excuse me, it's like $70. Um, anyway, so I picked this up. This bottle, when I saw it in the store, it was the first time I've ever seen it in person. It's completely sold out in Virginia and has been since I started hunting for whiskeys and rice and bourbons and whatever else. It is the most expensive bottle I've ever bought um, by about $65, $70. So it was $200 um, and I couldn't be happier with the purchase and I can't wait to open it and try it. Uh, definitely going to save it for a special occasion though. Kentucky Owl Batch 3 10 Year Rye. This has been, uh, I've seen so many videos that talk about how good this is. Uh, I can't wait to try it. I'm so excited. Um, definitely uh, do a, uh, a first pour versus the competition video with this one, comparing it to the other older ryes I have. I've got a 12 year old Whistle Pig, a 10 year old Whistle Pig. I've got a 10 year Basil Hayden rye. Got some other options. So I'm definitely gonna do uh, open this up and test it against the competition in a future video. Uh, but I can't be happier with this. So uh, very excited. Overall, it was a great trip. Um, there's a process that I had to kind of follow to get everything back in the state. Um, Virginia has a, a law in which you have to, you can only bring one liter of spirit into the state per trip. I had to follow that rule, which took a lot of driving back and forth across the border to, to comply with the law especially since I was going to put it on video. It was a great trip. I had a great time with my family, a great time with my daughter and son-in-law, uh, my wife's family. Until next time, find a bottle that you love.